Stock market performance across the world was strong in the second quarter of 2019. We all know this, but the biggest surprise was that bond performance was strong too. Few people could have predicted that with any skill. That's why it's so important to stay diversified and invested for the long term in your retirement portfolio. So, how did stock and bond markets perform in the second quarter of 2019? Hi everyone, I'm Mark Fonville, and today I'm going to educate you on how popular investment indexes performed in Q2 of 2019 and long term. Let's dive in. We start our return discussion with a high level look at a collection of major asset classes. As we can see from the illustration, stocks and bonds were both higher during the quarter and for the year. Let's look a little deeper at what was driving the returns of stocks and bonds across the board. To, be to begin, you can see how developed stock markets performed over the past 12 months ending June 30th, 2019. You'll notice a wide range of results which speaks to the need to diversify. While it would have been great to have all of your money invested in Switzerland, the best performing country, Investing in only one country introduces the possibility that all of your money could have been in Israel, the worst performing country. The dots on or near each country's bar represents how the local stock market performed over the past 12 months. In most cases, stock market returns measured in the local market currency were better than when converted to the U.S. dollar. This is because the U.S. dollar increased in value versus most currencies over the time period. A strengthening do dollar can have a negative impact on non-U.S. investment returns when viewing performance in U.S. dollars. A similar trend with an even wider range of returns occurred in the stock markets of emerging countries. Brazil, for example, had the best return, and Pakistan had the largest decline over this 12-month period. Our evidence-based investment process has us favor several factors of return. Factors are very specific characteristics of stocks and bonds that can explain expected returns for a particular segment of the stock market or bond market. One of those factors is a preference for small companies versus large companies. History has shown that small companies tend to outperform large companies over the long term. Looking back over the past five years, we see that outperformance in non-US companies but we didn't see it in U.S. and emerging market companies. Another factor of return we emphasize is on value companies. Historically, value companies have outperformed growth companies over the long term. Yet over the past five years, we can see that large growth companies outperformed large value companies. When we look at small value companies, we see that emerging market small value companies have done well versus growth companies. We also see that U.S small value and international small value companies had periods when value outperformed and periods where they didn't. While we expect our factors of return to always deliver positive results, realized returns are often different. This is exactly why we diversify into multiple areas of the market over time. Now, let's turn our attention to bonds where we start by looking at recent interest rates. Here, we plot what is commonly referred to as a yield curve to show us how much interest we receive from bond investments with different maturities. The green line represents interest rates at the end of 2018, and the blue, blue line represents interest rates at the end of the second quarter. Since the blue line is lower than the green line, we can see that interest rates decrease during the year. Bond prices rise when interest rates fall, and this helped boost results in the first and second quarter. We typically prefer investing in bonds that have shorter maturities and higher quality than the broad bond market. And we do this because we rely on bonds to act as a sort of buffer or life raft for your portfolio, basically to offset the volatility of, of stocks. Now, while never guaranteed, high quality bonds with short maturities have historically shown lower volatility over time, and particularly when stocks fall. During the second quarter in for the year, falling interest rates helped all bonds, especially longer maturity bonds as seen in the graph on the left. In the chart on the right, we saw investors move back into lower credit quality bonds as stock markets rallied. Yet, all bond credit qualities gained during the quarter. The lesson here is that 
you really don't even want to try to time the bond market. Should you be long term? Should you be in short term bonds? And the reality is you just don't know in the short term. So pick a lane, stay with it, and that could potentially help your portfolio long term. Looking at year to date returns in a different way, here you can see the performance of different stock and bond markets over the past 15 calendar years. As you can see, U.S. large companies have performed the best year to date with positive 18.5% returns, while cash provided a 1.3% year to date return on the low end. Maintaining a diversified asset mix, mix such as the 65% stock, 35% bond mix shown in the white square kept us away from the more extreme returns from year to year with significantly less volatility over the last 15 years, highlighting the importance of maintaining a well-diversified mix of asset classes in our portfolios. If you maintain the right mix of investments and stay invested long-term, you may have a better chance of making your money last up to and through retirement. But for a lot of people, you may just not know. So if you're not a client of Covenant, give us a ring. We can help analyze your personal situation and construct a portfolio that actually syncs up with the goals that you're trying to achieve. If you're an existing client and you want to sit down and, and discuss your personal situation face to face or over the phone, give us a call and we'd love to catch up. Thanks a lot. Have a great one.